So today I want to share with you some of my favorite techniques for creating and enhancing sequences. If you're interested in more techniques and want to dig deeper, I released two more patching techniques courses recently. There's also the modular cookbook available, so there are links in the description to everything. Of course, these techniques will work with various modules and they will work also quite nicely in hardware. Now, the first technique I want to show you is how you can add variation by using a second sequencer to transpose your main sequence. Here I have a simple eight-step sequence with the basic sequencer from Count Modular. And now by mixing in a second sequencer, I have here the ADDR sequencer running with the clock division. I can transpose the sequence and add movement to it. Just make sure that if you are using a quantizer, have your mix before the quantizer so everything stays together. Right, so the ADDR sequencer will go to the mixer. Right, and now I can just add this in. Now here and here it will be transposed. The next idea is how you can add variation with randomness per step. Here again I have a simple 8 step sequence, this time with a sec 3. And the idea here is to mix a random source but having control over its amplitude so we can choose when to mix it in with the original sequence. Here I'm using the VCV random as my random source. And you can see that I first send it to a VCA before the mixer so I can control its amplitude with an external signal. So first of all, let me mix this in. Right, maybe something like this. And now I can use, for example, the second row of the sequencer to open the VCA. And let's say that I want this to happen only on steps 3 and 5. Right, so now only on these steps we will get a random note, but the rest of the sequence is still repetitive. The next technique is how you can add variation with a sequential switch. Here I have a sequence with the first row here of the sec 3. I have another sequence with the second row. Right, so with the sequential switch, we can switch between the first row and the second row and even add some random variation. So I will send the first row here to the sequential switch and then the second row and then once again the first row and then here I have a random source that I will use. This will be the fourth input here. So we have one, two, one random. This will go back to the quantizer and now have a listen to this. The next one is about adding space to your sequences. Here I have a seven step sequence again with the basic sequencer. And it's always running and gets quite repetitive pretty quickly. So for adding variation and space, we can use Boolean logic. I will use the end output. And then the first input, the A input will come from the uh, same sequence. And the second input, input B, will be the gate sequencer that I have here, right? Only when they are both playing, right? The basic sequencer and the nibble sequencer, only when they are both high, we will get the sequence. You can do the same also with the VCA and use the VCA as end logic. I have here the same sequences. But now I will use the VCA so the output will come from the VCA. Again, one signal will be our original sequence and the other sequence will open the VCA. And again, only when both are playing, when both are high, the sequence will actually go through the VCA. The 
Another way of adding variation is by using track and hold, which will pass the sequence through, but then sort of uh, freeze it when sending it a gate. Here again I have the same sequences, but now we will send the pitch through the track and hold back to the quantizer, and you can see that we get basically the same result because the track and hold will track the sequence, it will let it through until we start using gates to hold or freeze the sequence. So again, I have here the nibble sequencer for this. The next technique is about generating evolving sequences from LFOs and sample and hold. Here I have a triangle LFO, you can see this here on the scope. I will send this also to my sample and hold, and this will go also to the scope. And now we need a gate or a trigger to tell the sample and hold when to take a snapshot of this LFO. So I will use a clock in this case, and I will run it. Right, and now I can attenuate this signal right before it goes to the quantizer. And we get a pitch sequence that will change by changing the rate of the LFO. And also by changing the shape, if we use, for example, a saw wave. Inverted saw wave. Another unique way of generating pitch sequences is by mixing gate sequences. Here I have three of them. The first one is set to eight steps and I'm mixing them before the quantizer. So if I bring this in, right, we get two values, so we get two different notes. But now I have here another sequence with seven steps, so if I combine it or mix it, we get already more values and more notes. And I have here Another sequence with five steps. The next technique works great for adding harmony and chords with the help of sample and hold. I have here a seven step sequence with the ADDR sequencer. This is sequencing the VCV VCO. And now I can use sample and hold to sample this sequence with the clock division and get another sub-sequence from it. So I will use a copy of this sequence. This will go to the input of the sample and hold. And I have here a clock division of two. And this will sequence another VCV VCO, which is tuned an octave down. You can do this with a slower clock. Right, so I get another copy of the sequence to another sample and hold every a clock division of four. In this case, the oscillator is tuned two octaves down. And another time with another oscillator, again, the pitch will go to the sample and hold, another clock. Get harmony from one simple sequence. One of my favorite things to experiment with is splitting sequences with a comparator. Here I have a 16 step sequence coming from the ADDR sequence, and I will send the sequence also to the comparator module that I have here. Now the comparator will compare this sequence with its own threshold or offset. 
and will output gates when the sequence goes above the threshold and when it goes below it. So for example, I can use the above output to bring in one voice. I have here the FM operator. Now for now, the sequence is always above the threshold, but I can bring up the threshold a bit or the offset here. Right, something like this. And now I can use the below output to bring in a different voice. I have here the VCO going through a wave folder. And we split the sequence to two voices. We can try the same concept with the slope detector whenever the sequence is on its way up. We will get a gate from the rising output, and when it's on its way down, we will get a gate from the falling output. I have here the same sequence and voices, so the pitch will again go also to the slope detector, and then we can connect the rising output to one voice, so again when the pitch rises, when it's on its way up, we will get the FM operator. And then when it's going down, when it's falling, we will get a second voice. The last technique I want to show you is utilizing the reset input of a sequencer to add variation and movement. Usually we will use the reset input of a sequencer to make sure that it's synced with other elements we have in our patch. But we can also use it more creatively. For example, I have here a simple eight step sequence. And I can use a second sequencer to trigger the reset and again add variation. Here I have a 10 step sequence. This is Decima from CV Funk. Right, so I will connect it instead of the reset from the clock. It will come from the sequencer. Now let's say we will have step one. Again, this is a 10 step sequence. And maybe also step four. And here we have probability per step. Maybe also seven and nine, again with probability. So we get something with much more movement and variation. And that was it. I hope you will go and explore these ideas. Again, if you want to dig deeper, take a look in the description for links to the different resources. Thank you for watching. Cheers.